Diwali is derived from the Sanskrit word Deepavali, meaning a row or series of lights. And it's a celebration of the victory of light over darkness, symbolizing good and evil respectively. Food is an essential part of the festivities and Utica is about to present a celebratory menu inspired by the festival of lights. I'm encouraging people to get into the kitchen to bring back the practice of making a special meal at home. Diwali gives us the perfect opportunity to do just that. A mixed veg curry on this auspicious day is an absolute must as it signifies abundance all year round, which is why I'm preparing a Navaratan korma to go with that soft flour puri and for some sweet decadence, a chocolate glazed barfi. I'm starting out with the Navaratan korma first and for that we can have some sunflower oil going into the pan. I'm going to turn up the heat here to this chopped onion going in, a teaspoon of salt, and some curry leaves. I'm not using whole spices in this and that's because I want a really smooth sauce that's free from any whole chunky spices. Ready for the ginger and garlic and pop that in to this a tablespoon of red chili powder. Remember the cream is going to take away a fair bit of the burn and mix that through. Next in goes the potatoes. Cauliflower, green beans and carrots, all going in, stir the vegetables and the spicy oil. It's almost like stir frying. To this, add some boiled water. The vegetables have started to simmer gently after the boiled water has been added. And now spice it up with a bit of ground cumin, ground coriander, half a teaspoon of garam masala and some turmeric. I don't fry these spices in the oil. It tends to burn quite easily and ruins the flavor. Add some tomato and leave this to simmer. Potatoes can be quite unpredictable when it comes to softening. I always say to be safe, cook them over a low heat. That's now done. And while that's simmering, let's get on with the soft flour puri. This is an easy recipe. To start out, add the milk powder to the flour. In goes the baking powder and some salt as well. Soft butter going in. Using your fingertips, rub the butter into the flour. This is exactly the way my gran used to make these. And there's something quite therapeutic about smushing the butter into the flour, making these little crumbs. Brings back lots of wonderful warm memories. To this, make a well in the center, just like that. Pour in half the warm water and half the milk. This is where your fingers turn into a bit of a gadget. Work from the center of the bowl outward and draw the ingredients together. A little more water going in now and the remaining milk. The best part about Diwali is entertaining when everyone arrives early and they do get involved with the cooking as well. And this is such a simple recipe, you can even get the kids to help out with it and I'm sure they'll get it right. The dough is slightly sticky a little flour going on top and work that to coat. Let's get rid of this bowl and use the countertop. I'm going to roll the dough into a log just like this. That looks about right. I'm going to slice this log in half. If you do work slowly, remember to keep the dough covered with a damp cloth. That prevents it from drying out. While the oil is heating up, we're ready to roll. Use a knife and just slice these into little portions. You can adjust the size according to your preference. Roll this into a smooth ball, press that down, and in the center of the dough, pop in a touch of flour, and that's gonna help these puris puff and flatten. A little flour going onto the work surface. I remember when I was learning how to make rotis, I was put on puri duty for a long while, and that's because they're so much easier to roll out. Not too thin. There we go. First puri going in. And it starts to puff beautifully, which is exactly what we're looking for. And we can pop the next one in. Flip that over. It should be pale golden in color. The puri is ready. I've got a tray here with a rack on top. Lift them out the oil. Tilt slightly to get off as much oil as possible and pop them on the tray. Never place these on absorbent paper towel. That's going to make them quite soggy. That's our beautifully puffed puri is done. Let's have a look at the Navaratan Korma. 
I've been simmering this uncovered and that's so the vegetables don't lose their color. The carrots look orange, the green beans still green and the potato looks like it's come along nicely. To this, pour in some fresh cream. You can add extra cream if you like it mild or if your curry is too hot and you're trying to tone it down a bit, add the frozen peas. Sprinkle the green pepper over. You could also fry the green pepper with the onion, but they tend to lose their crunch and a bit of their flavor. This is almost done. There's just enough time for a quick tidy up and I'm going to show you how to impress your guests with a chocolate glazed barfi. This is a really simple barfi recipe, but what I quite enjoy about it is you can take a standard recipe and transform it into something quite extraordinary. And I'm going to show you just how to do that. For the barfi, you're going to need some milk powder, 500 grams. We've got some dessert cream here as well. You're going to rub those ingredients together. They should resemble large crumbs and leave that to dry out for a few hours or preferably overnight. Once that's dry, pop it into a food processor and blitz it until it's quite crumbly. I've done that already. To start, we've got some water going into the pot and to this, a cup and a half of sugar. I'm using a metal spoon to stir this together. Don't switch on the heat just yet until we dissolve that slightly. Switch on the heat. I'm dissolving the sugar over a gentle heat and you should never bring sugar syrup up to the boil unless all the sugar crystals are dissolved. Otherwise, it causes the syrup to crystallize and that's going to ruin the barfi. Once the sugar syrup comes up to the boil, you can stop stirring and wait for the syrup to thicken slightly. I'd say about three to four minutes. And to check if the syrup is ready, pop some onto the spoon, let it cool for a few seconds, dip your fingertip into the sugar syrup and touch your finger together with your thumb. It should start to form a thread, which means the syrup is ready. Lower the heat, add the milk powder in. Stir that through using a spatula now more milk powder going in. Work the ingredients together. It does get quite thick. We've got green cardamom going in and to this melted butter. Don't be tempted by recipes that use full cream milk and fresh cream condensed milk in the barfi. The more ingredients it has, the softer it is and the more difficult it becomes to mold. We've got a silicone mold here and I've used non-stick spray to grease this. Start out by using a teaspoon of the mix going in. I'm using something called the Russian tail here for the mold. And it's got a lovely shape, quite exotic. And I think it does suit Diwali quite nicely. Doesn't matter if it looks quite rough. It's going to come together quite nicely in the mold. The last little bit going on. There's a touch of butter left in this bowl. And I'm going to dip my finger in and just tap down to ensure I smooth the top of the barfi mold. Once this comes down to room temperature, I'm going to place it in the freezer. You need to freeze this for about two to three days so it properly sets. And this is so we don't distort the shape when we are molding it. I've made some already. It's out the freezer and ready to glaze. I've got some white chocolate and I've melted that together with some fresh cream. Use a spoon and stir that. And now add some food coloring. You can do shades of pink or red. Let's see what this does. I love the way the color changes. It's one of the exciting things about baking. You need to stir this until it cools down almost to room temperature. And as you can see, the more you work it, the glossier it gets. Ready to glaze. So start at the top and swirl around quite gently. Move the glaze around. Otherwise you're going to have glaze on one side and not evenly over the others. I've used about 300 grams of chocolate here and you can scoop off the excess from the tray and reuse it. Let's get these onto the cake board. And you have to be quite careful, you don't want them to topple over. That's the first one. There we have it. They do tend to topple over quite easily, so do take care when you're doing this. Yes, those look lovely. To decorate, you could use dried or fresh edible flowers for this. Maybe on the side. There we go. And that's what it should look like. I'm covering the tip of the spurfy with some gold leaf and a few little specks of gold leaf going on the sides as well. You can really play around with these. I try not to use nuts to decorate as it does take away from the molded barfi shape. So it's always best to just use edible roses and the gold leaf and some dried rosebuds. And that's how I decorate them. 
I'm going to finish up on these. Pop these onto a cake stand. They look really exotic and beautiful. The Navarath and Korma is ready, so are the soft flour puris. It's time to serve. I've got some fried cashew nuts here, and these go on top of the Navarath and Korma. Toasted almonds also going on top. I'm going to serve that with the soft flour puris, and we've got those exotic chocolate glazed barfies. I'd like to wish you and your family a very happy Diwali.